leaders who are uh, on site in Birkeshtaba in the Kola board. Um, so welcome to our meeting. Uh, my name is Edith Pushki. I'm from Eltered Nonprofit LTD, and uh, we are part of the team organizing this uh, Erasmus Plus project, which is funded by the European Union. Okay. Uh, on the first sli slide, you can see the program, the schedule for today, uh, which means that uh, you can decide to stay until the end. Uh, probably Orshi was already talking to you for the online people that how it's going to be look like. For us being on site in the collabor, there will be a short break uh, just to have a little bit uh, fresh air, and then we will continue for the second part. And uh, just to let you know that who, who are the members, please put the next slide. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, there are two partners, one from Hungary and one from Finland. And I would like to ask uh, Sanna and Orshi to present themselves. Yes, um, good morning, everyone. My name is Sanna Nummela, and I'm representing EduCluster Finland. It's the university owned company. And a little bit later in my presentation, I will tell you more about what we do and, and what is the reason that I'm here. But Nice to see you all online and then the ones on site with Edith. Welcome. And Orshi? Yes, thank you. Um, and I am a, a cooperative partner of the project, which means that I will be uh, supporting the implementation uh, throughout. And um, you will see me uh, also in the ELTM and network, but Finminta, uh, many of you may have heard of us. We are aiming to promote education development uh, based on Finland and based on many good global, global practices around. And um, we are very happy to be taking part in this project. And we have Laszlo who is not present yet, but those who will be traveling to Finland, we'll meet him there as well. Take the next slide, please. Okay. Um, there will be a short introduction to this project so that you will know why it was uh, planned and why we are implementing it. Uh, the main objectives are, you can see them on the slide, that uh, to find new learning and tech teaching methods and approaches. Um, uh, actually, everything was coming out from a, an English teacher in Hungary. Uh, she was um, telling us that, uh, you know, in Hungary, there are these compulsory um, learning periods for teachers to collect the, uh, the credits. And all the programs are not up to date for the present needs of the teachers and the students. And as uh, we were already thinking about Alter in Alter Edu to uh, import the Finnish education processes, because they are so much ahead of us, uh, then we decided to start it with the English language teachers. This way we found Finminta, who is already very active in Finland and in Hungary, and through Finminta we met EduCluster. So that's how this project team was uh, set up. And our main goal is to bring all the knowledges that is possible within this project here to fin uh, from Finland here to Hungary, so that English teachers in Hungary can learn uh, new approaches, methodologies from uh, Finland. Uh, there is also another uh, possibility in this that between or beside that you are teaching the English, you can use it and practice it more and more with uh, in other English teachers in Finland and then later on in a longer process, we can even enlarge this project on a wider range in Europe. And uh, another thing that we learn how to work on international levels together and uh, not to be sticked only within the country uh, territory, but use all knowledges that are available in Europe and later on all around the world. Like, uh, I, I like this uh, word local, like think local, global, but act local. So we have a wide range of resources all around the globe. And let's start with the first step. Mm, about the activities, we will talk later on because there will be a, a part uh, during this presentation about the activities. Uh, the target audience are Hungarian and Finnish English teachers. We start with us, with the Hungarian teachers and later on the Finnish English teachers will also join the network team. 
And there are two headquarters, as you can see on the pictures, uh, one in Hungary, Bekis Csaba and Tarhos, and one in Finland, uh, Jüveskole. And uh, our goal is to find all those teachers who are highly motivated, who are really passionate about how to teach the language, the English language to the students the best way, how to be really up to date and 21st centuries, uh, and use 21st centuries knowledges and approaches to support the kids the best way we can do nowadays. And that's why we started to uh, cooperate with Finland because they, they have a lot to learn from. Yes, um, okay. The main goal of the project is to set up an English language teachers mentor network team, which means in Finland, it's very common that uh, the teachers work with uh, lifelong learning processes and they know uh, they run sustainable networks among themselves. And one thing we want to learn from them, how they do this, what's the reason behind and how they update or keep them uh, alive even during uh, the, the academic years. Uh, therefore, we have already established a, a network, uh, sorry, an online platform for that, which is a website. And there is also a Facebook network for that. Uh, but all the structure and the running process will be created uh, with you together because the main uh, focus is to have it really uh, living and alive, which means we have a sort of a frame, uh, an idea, like how we should do it, but everything will be uh, uh, adopted to you, to your needs and to your activities. But the main goal is uh, to have us uh, keep uh, thinking all the time, brainstorming on, all the time, solving uh, teachers' problems, considering English language teaching in different uh, ages of the classes. Uh, we will have for that, uh, we will organize for that monthly sessions. Uh, there will be guest speakers about the methodologies and the network and the discussion process and the learning opportunities will be organized completely with you. And therefore, we are asking you to like, what we want to create a real living network, uh, I would say a, a democratic uh, uh, process. And that, that is also something we have to learn how to do this. Uh, there will be uh, people selected for the project. Some of them will be uh, online, some of them will be uh, offline, but uh, we plan to stream most of our training so that even those who won't be selected for uh, the Hungarian project, uh, sorry, for the Hungarian workshop or for the Finnish workshop will be uh, in the possibility to receive all the knowledges because that's the aim of the Erasmus Plus program that whatever we have uh, adopted or export, sorry, imp uh, imported to Hungary that must be available for everyone for free. Mm -hmm. We have uh, planned an upcoming uh, monthly session for you just to keep us in contact because the first big uh, network, not network workshop will be in January, but between January and October, there are several months. So we, uh, we uh, planned to have a monthly session, which is online and you can join to it uh, all the time and it's going to be every Thursday at 3 p.m. Hungarian time. Uh, if you think that this uh, timetable is not comfortable or not convenient that please let us know. Of course we will try to set it according to that most of you could be uh, able to take part on it. And there you can see the dates. You don't need to take notices of it because we will send you the slides later on then you will have everything on site with you. And uh, other activities are uh, trainings and workshops organized in Hungary and in Finland. Oh, about the Finnish one, we have another slide, right? Yes, <laughs> okay, sorry. And uh, the training in Hamb Hungary will be had in Békés Csaba in Kollabor. At least 20 teachers will be selected to take part on it. And actually we were planned to have it in the autumn, uh, holiday, but as it was <laughs> deleted uh, two days ago, we just made a quick readjustment of the project and uh, we postponed it to uh, January uh, 2nd, uh, from 2nd till uh, 6th. Uh, there will be trainers coming from Finland, uh, 
from Educastel part and from uh, Alter Edu part, and uh, beside the uh, 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 methodologies, uh, uh, there will be workshops uh, how to do and how to apply them. What we want to have, like uh, not only have the theoretical part as a lecture, but to apply them, sort of uh, learning by doing processes. Uh, that's what we think and what we believe are the best to apply all the knowledges during doing. Everything will be uh, recorded, so later on they will be available, uh, mostly on the website. And uh, the finished training will be, could you just turn to the next one? It's going to be in March. Yes, it's going to be in March uh, on the third week or the second week from the 13th till the 17th, because that week we have the uh, national holiday, the 15th of March. And uh, some of the schools uh, give the more of the days as a non, uh, not teaching, but working days. And um, that's the best way to take the less days out of holidays. And uh, during that week, we will be visiting schools in Finland and lectures, seeing how do they apply all those techniques and methodologies uh, you will hear, hear and learn from during the Hungarian uh, training. Yes. Okay. Uh, the outcome of the project will be a handbook uh, written by us. But for that, we will need, uh, of course, all your experiences, because it's not only taking uh, the techniques and the methodologies from Finland, but to learn how the adaptation process is going. It's also something new we have to learn because of course, Finnish teachers in Finland, they have uh, had different uh, um, way of uh, the universities of training uh, teachers. Uh, they have different cultures, different uh, uh, motivations, and we have to adopt everything to us for the Hungarian um, differences. And for the training company, it's also a learning process how to do it, because this is the first uh, step for us to uh, export Oh, sorry, to import Finnish uh, educational knowledge. And then we keep it continued, and then we will uh, adopt more and more from Finland, considering teaching and uh, school uh, techno technologies. Uh, the, the handbook will be digitally, uh, and uh, all the participants' uh, views and experiences will be incorporated into the handbook. That's why a very interactive work will be set up with the teachers who will take part in the pro program. Yes. And now this is Orshi's part. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Edith, for introducing the project activities. Um, so I, I'm, I would like to uh, introduce the application task, which is very important for those who would like to join the project and be part of these uh, trainings in Hungary and visit schools in Finland. So as Edith mentioned, we are looking for uh, highly motivated English language teachers uh, from Hungary who can uh, join us and work with us on gathering the most uh, important experiences from our learning journey. And for this, we would like the applicants to send us a three minute video of themselves um, re responding to these three questions. Uh, seen on the screen. So meaning, why did you become an English language teacher? What achievements or successes in your teaching career would you highlight? And why would you like to join the English language mentor network? So, and we, we would like to, of course, uh, have these videos in English. And um, the emphasis of the evaluation will be put on the motivation and sort of the content of your videos. So we are not very much interested in your uh, technological uh, settings. So we don't really care if, if you are recorded with your selfie camera on your phone. We only care that your face is visible. Uh, so we can see that it is you talking and we can of course like hear you properly. So like the basic technological requirements are, are important, but the, the emphasis is, as I mentioned, will be on the content of your uh, replies. And so, um, 
we of course would like to give you the chance to um, ask questions about this and about the whole application process so we will have our first meeting on the 20th of october where um, i mean the first eltmn meeting so this will be um, basically the platform of the english language mentor network will be a facebook group which edit already mentioned and we will send you the links to join and in this facebook group we will be always like updating our members to um, join our monthly sessions and on our first monthly session it's it's purposefully because the, the uh, before the deadline so that you can come and ask questions and maybe even you know sort of interact with us and and uh, let us know if you have any concerns or comments on this application process and of course um, along with this video we will have this short survey where we just ask basic um, questions on your interests on where do you teach and you will see uh, because this survey is of course shared with you later on. And the deadline is, as I as you can see on the screen, is 31st of October this year. Um, so this is the application form. You can take a look at it now, but uh, I would like you to stay with us uh, because Sanna will soon take over the floor and introduce you um, more in interesting content on Finnish education. But I just wanted to let you know some options for sharing the video because you might um, meet some uh, some technological challenges here because the video may be too big as a file. You can, of course, try to attach it to an email and email it to us uh, or you can upload it to Google Drive and share the link uh, from the Google Drive. And uh, you can even try to use Dropbox because it may have some free features to use and, and transfer the file to us. But please uh, feel free to reach out and ask for help because uh, we all find this uh, a bit of challenge. So um, if you if you you know have some trouble sending the video to us, like feel free to email us or message us on the Facebook group, and we will be helping you. So yes, and as I said, like all this information um, is actually in the face in this uh, Google form, and you will um, you will have a look at it uh, later on. And we can also in maybe in the end of this uh, event, we can again have a look at it together um, as well. Yes, thank you. And uh, feel feel free to follow us. We have this website. You may have seen it, magicofteaching.eu. And we have a Facebook page. And to the Facebook page, um, we have linked this uh, Facebook group that I mentioned. So now I will give the mic to Sanna Nummela from EduCluster Finland. Thank you. Thank you, Orsi. <clears throat> and as mentioned, um happy to be here with you today and then um, for the following um, hour or so I will um, showcase a little bit about the Finnish education a little bit about the um, education system and then of course looking towards the uh, tools and methods used in a, in a Finnish classroom. I would start by sharing my screen just Can you share the screen? Or? No, not yet. I okay. wanted to. The challenge with the uh, too many monitors. So. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, good. Try one more time.
Okay, probably now again with the... You started screen sharing, but I don't see anything yet. That you... It's in process. Maybe Sanna had an uh, internet connection. Yes. There is something here, but, but do you see the screen now? No. No, not yet. Okay. Do I'll, you want I'll... to email the presentation to me and I can share it maybe? Um, let me, I think it's, it was, there was something with the, with the connection it, it went, but I, I think it would be working now. At least it shows on my. Do can you see it? Yes. Now we can see. It. Thanks. Okay. Good. Brilliant. So um, hopefully now it's it's going to work. That's why I came to the office uh, to to be sure of of um, connections. So uh, inside the Finnish education and a little bit towards the student centered approach in in teaching and learning. Um, a few words about myself, um, how come I'm the one talking with you here. Um, I represent EduCluster Finland, as already mentioned, and I work here um, as a teacher trainer and, and specialist for the entrepreneurship training, but also um, all kind of pedagogical development programs that we offer for KT to higher education teachers. And from my background, um, I've been working both in education and in business life, mainly in the fields of, of catering and hospitality and in, in marketing. So not just uh, working in education would bring some other elements to, to my uh, presentations and also to my training programs. And, and why EduCluster Finland? Um, as said, we are very happy to, to be part of these type of projects. We are a company owned mainly by the University of Jyväskylä. So Jyväskylä, you, you may have heard, is a town in, in the middle of Finland and, and the University of Jyväskylä is, is one of the biggest um, national wild. So they are also our biggest owner. And we are functioning, functioning in three uh, main areas uh, of our fields. And, and the biggest and largest is, is K-12 Finland International Schools. We have our own schools, for example, in Qatar, Doha, in Oman, Muscat, and in India, in Pune. This would mean that uh, we establish the, the schools that are functioning with the Finnish curriculum, and they are teachers from Finland operating in a school. And, and then uh, the, the second stream that we uh, function is the teacher training programs, and that would be more like my field. So the teachers from KT to higher education are the target group. And then the third one, um, the field that we operate is the uh, vocational education. And because of our owners, as mentioned, the University of Yvaskula being the um, largest and biggest one, then the two other owners are University of Applied Sciences and then Vocational Consortium Gradia. And through our owners, we are, of course, able to get our hands in the latest research, but also that we, are, we can operate in different levels of education and, of course, strongly also in higher education, except to the schools that we, we operate in gate 12 sector. And, and as Edith men mentioned already at the beginning, that there are many things um, that are well done here in Finland. And of course, we are very proud of that. 
and we are happy that our education system has um, gone uh, in, in a level that it is um, benchmarked in the world. But of course, that was the, not the main goal that we had to, to have an education so that the others can, can come and, and learn from us. It was mainly to, to survive and get our pupils and students um, as, as much information as possible and then to guide them to be um, the persons who can multitask and, and then survive in, in working labor markets. And then, of course, the ones who, who go to the higher education that they will do better in, in there. So all in all, even though the PISA results are, are looking good, we are still doing lots of uh, progress and, and trying to uh, try new methods and tools in our day daily teaching and learning. And if we're looking at this list, I think uh, the thing that we are happy is also mentioned that the happiest uh, country or the, the happiest nation I would like to see that this is very much related to the education as well, because in, in early grades, our children are learning through play. And then later on, we use lots of different kind of uh, pedagogical approaches like project based learning, phenomenon based learning. So we are using different methods in order to, to sort of serve the, uh, the excitement of, of learning to all of our pupils and students. So that it would be also affecting the, the um, feedback and feelings of, of us as a thing to be to be the, the happiest nation in the world. And as mentioned, the uh, Finnish education system, we, we needed to make the changes like um, 30, 20 years ago. And, and now if we are looking at the structure of the Finnish education system, uh, one thing to highlight is that what is happening after the ninth grade. So our students start their uh, pre-primary education in, in six years old, and, and that is done either in, in uh, kindergartens or then at schools. But those are like um, with the approach of getting to know what is it like to be in a school. So the school days are very short from, from nine to 12 or, or similar. And a basic education um, is from seven to um, uh, 18 years or the 16 years at the moment. And th that what it was, which I mentioned that what is happening after the ninth grade is the first uh, of those choices that our students need to do. So they, they have to make a choice whether they would choose the um, upper secondary education in high school or the vocational studies. And if we look back from the history of, of um, 30, 40 years ago, there was only a few um, choosing the vocational and, and mostly of our students wanted to have a high school path. This lead to the challenge that we didn't have enough working force and some of the fields were lacking people's in, in their professions. So we, we started systematically um, to change the image of, of vocational education, but also training the teachers. And today, the thing is that 50-50% uh, would, uh, so 50% would go to the high school and another 50 to vocational. And some of the vocational fields are so popular that actually you are not able to get in. So you probably need to need to go to the high school path. <laughs> But nevertheless, uh, whether you choose the high school or the vocational, as you can see the, um, the narrows in here, you can still continue your studies to the higher education. So the changes we made 30 years ago was that there are no dead ends. It doesn't matter even though you then wish to sort of, you go to the vocational sector and you wish to continue in a university, even a doctoral degree that is very much possible. And this would uh, lead to the fact that uh, we can sort of change our minds, we can change our career plans and our futures, and we can write them ourselves, which again would reflect to the fact that we feel that we, we are uh, the happiest nation because of the choice. And also this would um, highlight the, the importance of the teachers, all the teachers that uh, they provide enough information and support for the pupils in, in lower grades and then the students in, in upper grades so that the students become 
the ones who are owning their learning process and also they are the ones then to make those decisions whether um, it is a high school or vocational and then later on whether it's a university applied sciences or directly to the labor markets. But all in all, the, the Finnish system uh, is functioning very well and, and uh, the students are, are happy and the pupils are happy about the choices that they can make themselves. And now uh, when we are approaching today's topic about methods and tools, uh, we can look the whole sort of um, the elements of what is happening in the classroom through the skills and competencies that are needed. A very good example of uh, skills and, and competencies required in the future is the OECD Learning Compass from uh, 2030, which had uh, highlighted three different types of skills that are needed. So first of all, the cognitive and metacognitive skills uh, related to the critical thinking, creative thinking, learning to learn and, and self-regulations. So these are the skills and competencies that we provide for our pupils already in lower grades, but of course, even more uh, upper grades throughout the different kind of projects and, and, and collaboration with one another, teamwork as such. Then the social emotional skills. And, and here, as mentioned already in a report, uh, was the empathy, responsibility, collaboration. So when we are running the projects and students are working in teams, the collaboration is very important. So they will know how to be a member of the team and how to work with one another. But also they would uh, then know how to be, um, how to ex ex sort of, um, how to express their own feelings and, and thoughts and how to be a critical thinker, not just to, to go with the flow when being a member of the team. And then the third uh, type of the skills is practical and physical skills related to the um, new information, communication technology devices and, and so on. So when I'm looking at the, um, our, the, the teachers sort of the workload and what they're doing in a classroom, it's, it's not just about teaching the subject, it's also very much about teaching the skills and competencies for the pupils and students to manage later on in a labor market in a working life and then in, in their future studies and now some of these global competencies i already mentioned uh, for example the, the critical thinker and a problem solver but uh, the others are something that mainly of course come in a classroom while doing different kind of um, homeworks or, or works together with the other students now, in this case, I would say that the classroom teacher has um, a better chance of, of providing these different type of skills because the classroom teacher usually teach many subjects. So he or she is, is more involved with, with his or, or her own uh, classroom and can that how sort of be more in um, provide the skills inside different uh, subjects. Now, when, when we're talking about the English language teaching, um, these skills and competencies are at, as important as the in, inside the other subject, but they might be a challenge of, of how to uh, provide these because there are lots of other elements that you, you need to go through with, with your students. And even though uh, none of these, uh, I would say, is, is more important than the other, but I would still like to ask you, so little exercise here so that we don't fall into sleep. So now the ones who are in online, please write the chat three of those that you would think you uh, highlighted the most, you think are the most important competencies. And now the, the ones in um, Collabor, you can have a short uh, discussion, just a few, few minutes with one another that are some of these competencies more important than the others. Okay.
Okay, I think you have had shortly enough to have a discussion. And now if, if I we are looking through the chat um, quickly to to scan, I think the problem solver is, is mentioned quite many times and, and a critical thinker, self-directed uh, learner, globally aware, uh, global awareness and financially and economic liter literacy is here as well. Mm, yes. Great. So almost all of these are, are mentioned, probably the, the, the ones mentioned <clears throat> the most are the problems of a critical thinker. So uh, as already with the, with the short uh, questionnaire, we understand that we definitely need to help our pupils and students to, to be the ones who, who have the skills of, of solving the problems. And, and one main element of do that is different kind of uh, project-based uh, learning approaches or problem-based problem learn, learning um, approaches in, inside the classroom. And when um, we create the competencies of, of critical thinker that would definitely help our pupils later on in their life. And, and, and one which was mentioned quite many times was self-directed learner. Uh, in, in Finland, we see that it's, it's the crucial thing that our students learn how to reflect. And that's how they will get the understanding that they are the ones who are owning the learning process. So that the, in a way, the teacher is more, more the one who facilitates, not really the one who, who is kind of pouring out the information. Of course, helping and supporting, but not the ones who are saying what is right or wrong. And how do we see this and how do we approach that um, we are able to uh, even start planning of, of providing these skills and competencies? Uh, when we are looking at our classroom, we, we of course see it's, it's full of different kind of learners. Every student is a unique, and this would mean that they need to be, that the teaching and learning process need to be served in, in different way. There's not one way that would fit the, them all. And if we do it that way, of course, they would not learn um, effectively. Some may, yes, but not, not definitely for all of them. And with the uh, individualization, it is then also more uh, rewarding for the teacher because when we are using different tools and methods, we learn from, from our students, but of course, we, we also learn ourselves. And since the learning process goes both ways, it is, um, it is nice to see and, and observe when using a different methods that what would be working with uh, each of the students in a classroom. Well, now someone might, might say that, what if I have uh, 50 students in my classroom, I cannot serve them all individually. That's, that's definitely for sure. And it doesn't mean that we need to have sort of individual study plans for all of them, but we can easily try to characterize them that who are more visual learners, who are more the ones learning by doing, who are more um, the ones will learn better when they hear or read of themselves. So we can have different options for our students to choose. And with the lower grades, these uh, choices may be too challenging that uh, the, the pupils are not yet there that they could actually decide what kind of what type of exercise are, are best for them. But again, they start learning that, okay, this is the way I should do my homework because that's the way I, I learn the best, or this is the way I should start uh, preparing myself for the exams. And this is like highly used techniques in, in a classroom in Finland to try to uh, support our pupils to, to um, discover and learn that by themselves. Um, when talking about the teacher-centered learning, um, it's not opposite of the student-centered, which is, of course, the more highlighted here in Finland. And especially in adult education, uh, we are using teacher-centered learning 
because of the background of, of our uh, students. And, and challenging in adult education, also in, in language learning, is that um, when adults are in a classroom, if they look back the way they have been taught when they were uh, children, it was very much student-centered way to approach. So that the teacher is the one with the, all the experience and knowledge, and he or she is the one to share it. And of course, still, this is something that needs to be happening inside the classroom when, for example, uh, taking a new topic or explaining something, um, totally new content to, to our, our students. But what is something that we should maybe lean more towards to is the student-centered learning. And in this approach, probably you are very aware of, of this type of approach, but the main idea that the teacher is in, a, in the same level than the students. Of course, again, if it's the lower grades, it is impossible to, to even think that way anymore. And we need that adult in a room. It doesn't mean that uh, the teacher don't care anymore and, and, and do not teach at all, but mainly the mindset of, of everybody in the learning environment. So that the uh, knowledge, beliefs, and experience of the students and pupils count as much as the teachers. And, and this type of approach really helps us to um, give this um, feeling to our, our, our pupils that, that, that they are important. And also, on the other hand, they feel that now they have more freedom, but also uh, more responsibility. And the freedom is to kind of choose how they wish to learn, but the responsibility is the thing that they need to learn, they, they need to own their own learning process. And again, as I said before, this is something that we start rehearsing with our pupils in lower grades. And, and when they go to the upper grades like uh, seven, eight, nine, this is already expected for them that they would they would know that um, how to study and, and how to do the homework and, and how to prepare themselves for the um, like exams and so on. So uh, just to um, like overlook what is really the student-centered learning. If, uh, if this is something that you are very familiar, then um, let's just have a quick look. But anyhow, just at least uh, remind ourselves that what is included when we talk about the student-centered learning. So the main idea that this is more active than a passive learning. It's usually act active in a way that uh, student-centered approach is using different type of methods and tools like the project-based learning, phenomenon-based learning, where the role of the student is very active. So they are the ones to, to create, find the challenge, create the, uh, the answer together and, and work in a groups. And, and the role of the teacher is a bit different. So the student-centered learning is emphasizing a deep learning and understanding, not just the, the quick overview or, or try to remember remember stuff um, from from the head or or like just remember it short while for the exam and then then forget it at all. Uh, the student-centered learning increases the responsibility as already mentioned so that also the students feel that they are now the ones in charge of their learning process and of course in that way also sense of autonomy in the learner. Uh, the mutual respect is coming hand by hand when, and when doing the group work and teamwork uh, among the uh, student group. And now the role of the teacher is to help and support and facilitate the learning process. And what I think is important to, to highlight is that uh, also the student got the feeling that they are doing this together with the teacher and, and learning from one another. So then there is not the other person would know everything and just uh, pour the information for them, but they are doing the project together, learning from each other at the same time. And then the role of the teacher is to coach, uh, coach and facilitate. And the, the uh, evaluation assessment 
is always something that is asked. And the funny thing that um, there are quite many people who think that in Finland we do not have any exams or, or our assessment is like totally different than, than, than globally uh, in other countries. Well, that is not true. We do have exams. Um, most of the subjects have uh, some sort of an exams and, and they are important and our students, of course, need to prepare themselves for the exam. But the assessment process is, is not just about the exam. The exam can be like a half or the bigger part, uh, a big part of the assessment, but assessment is happening for all year along. So everything affects to the assessment and, and if we're talking about the numbers in a, in a basic education, it's all about how do you um, behave at school, how do you uh, work together with your uh, other students in a classroom, how do you do your homework, and then of course the exam, uh, what is your activities in a classroom, are you activity involved uh, when, when teachers are asking questions or otherwise, what is your mindset and, and, and how do how is your sort of um how is your mindset towards a school, for example? So all of these things matters to the whole assessment which is happening during the whole year. So then again, if there is the one exam that doesn't go that well, it doesn't mean that then the sort of the whole grade of of that su subject would be would be uh, bad or the the whole course would then be failed or such. So this also gives uh, for the students, especially in upper grades, um, the feeling that they can really affect. They can affect of, of their uh, numbers and they can affect their, their learning process by uh, behaving and being active like the whole, whole year along, not just the time when there is an exam. And this was, of course, helps them to understand the bigger picture and, and have like going approach to uh, deeper learning, not just memorizing stuff for the exam. Well, then uh, five tips how to make your classroom more student centered. And this is usually the challenging because, as mentioned uh, first, you need to give up the control. Well, this doesn't mean that uh, you need to let your pupils to, to run out wild and, and do whatever they please. It's more or less like you would need them, you would give them more exercises where they have the power so that they can um, be in charge of, of how they do it and, and what is the outcome that they are searching for from, from the project examples. Um, again, I mentioned about the assessment. Um, it's about re reflection. So not just about how do we observe our students, but how they reflect how they have learned. And now this is something uh, we already start teaching the elements of self-reflection in a kindergarten. So for our teachers, when student pupils are coming from the first grade, they have some sort of an idea. What does it mean when teachers are asking that? How do you think you did today? they have already been taught by answering the questions. For example, uh, what did I learn? Uh, what, what, what was the most important thing that I learned? Uh, what went well for today's work, the school day? And how should I improve? And uh, what do I need to learn more? So tiny steps were all, all already taken in, in a kindergarten and preschool. And now, of course, from the uh, creates up the, the role of self-reflection is more and more important. And, and also the parents are in, involved of the, of the assessment part in a way that uh, before the winter break and then the spring, the summer break, there is a self-reflection assessment done in a school. So that each student are doing it. Then the paper comes home. We as a parents are, are looking that do we agree and, and do we have any comments for the, the students or pupils own opinions. And then the teacher is also feeling the same form. And then we are looking at like, is it the almost the same that we think or if it's totally different? And then if there's, for example, the student is thinking that, yes, I did very well with the English, English language and the teacher is, is marking that, well, 
it was not that um, good. So of course, then we have a discussion that uh, how come the student is uh, reflecting that everything went well, even though it did not. And, and then um, we'll find out the um, solution that what was really happening there. Usually that's not the case. Usually the case is the students are saying that, ah, oh, I was not that good. I, I should have done better. I should learn more. And the teacher is, is writing the notes that actually it went very go, good and, and the, the results are good. And, and the number is, for example, since they are assessed from the numbers four to 10, so that the number is nine, even the student itself might think, like, okay, maybe I'm somewhere between seven and eight. And, and this is surely the better because again, they have learned to reflect. So they also know that what they need to learn. And when they think like, oh, there's so much I need to learn, they sometimes feel that they have not learned enough. So it's important to, to open up the, uh, in, in the assessment process, the self-reflection um, outcomes together with the parents and then the teachers. Well, then one thing to, to make your classroom more student-centered is, of course, listen and change. If there is a chance to, to get the feedback from our students, our pupils, and then do some even small changes to the lesson plan, that would probably be more motivated for the students. And now again, I think with the classroom teacher, this might be easier because he or she is, is with the pupils every day and, and in um, sort of inside with the more subjects than just one. But of course, we, we all can use this kind of approach and see how much can we change, for example, that the content or the way we are looking at the content. Um, student as active learners, so this is very much related to the ownership and, and the, the knowledge that they are the ones to own it. And then the last one, this is, of course, um, when we are talking about the K-12 schools in Finland and, and uh, pupils and students uh, need to go to school, this uh, question is not relevant as such. But when we go to the higher education and adult education, it is very relevant to ask that if the learners weren't required to come to your class, would they? Because when you are dealing with the, uh, with the adults and higher education, of course, they don't have to come. And surely in, in K-12, we are facing the challenges and not, not all the pupils and students are that motivated to come to our classroom. But what if they were not required, would they still come? And through that type of mindset to do slight changes that how could I motivate my students even more? And how can I create the learning environment? And now not just the facilities, because sometimes there's nothing we can do with the facilities. The walls are the colors they are and the chairs and tables are as they are. Maybe we can do slight changes, but not much. But the, the, the overall learning environment, the atmosphere in the learning environment, is there something we can do to do slight changes in order to provide more positive feelings or uh, creative atmosphere and so on? not that easy to solve but something that is good to sort of um, ask yourself once in a while that if there's something that you could do more and of course having a discussion with the colleague is usually something that easily helps in here so the, the um, highlight of, of collaboration with one another which will be uh, i will showcase shortly uh, is very important in this type of questions so now, how do you feel? The ones online just use chat and said uh, yes, no, not sure. And the ones on site, you can do some exercise of thumbs up, thumbs down, or, or both hands up. So uh, what do you think? Is your teaching student-centered at the moment? And Edith can be my eyes. I'm trying to look at the screen green to collaborate, but uh, it is so small, so that.
Good. And from the chat, I can see that um, most, yes, yes, most time try to, yes, yes. Collaborate for no one, yes. Brilliant. I am, I'm so happy that you are, you are um, saying the way you feel at the moment. And, and as said, it's not like it's must, definitely no. And I, I want to highlight that um, teacher-centered is, is as important as the student-centered. Now, if we are looking at the, the, the Finnish approach, this is something I just want to highlight that these are one of the key elements uh, to the way that we do in a classroom. Not working in every subject, not definitely working every day, but something that we would look more closely when they, we had the Hungarian training week in, in, in January, that what are the methods and tools to, to at least try some elements of the student-centered approach. Good. Um, as mentioned earlier, that um, we have a classroom full of different kind of learners, and of course it would help us to understand a little bit about the students' learning profiles. Again, the same thing with the classroom teacher. This is um, easier because they are together with the pupils um, every day. Uh, with the subject teacher, a bit challenging, but of course, through different kind of questionnaires or tryouts, you are able to get some sort of an idea that would help you to then build the lesson plans and provide those tools and methods that would help your students. And because of the different background, the way our pupils are learning and the way they are sort of um, going towards their studies, it is important to set up the goals. Um, in Finland, even our the word books, for example, mathematics and languages, it they are built in a way that there is this like a, a, the, the part that um, students mu must achieve. So the goals, meaning like these exercises, uh, each of them have to have have done must done during the, the certain time of period. And then there are these like an extra uh, materials that um, should achieve. But again, if it, there is a um, uh, lack of, maybe not lack of time, but like lack of um, resources of the learning, like learning difficulties or such, uh, it's okay if, if they don't achieve those. And then there are third part, which are nice to achieve. And these are the extra um, sort of an extra tasks, uh, extra elements in, in a workbook, which are mentioned that if you have the time, if you have the motivation and energy, just please do this, because then again, you can affect your assessment. These are the ones the teacher is looking like strongly plus plus to, to your grade. But of course, you will learn more, you will use more time with a certain subject, and, and that would, of course, help your um, your learning for the future. But the important is that um, this is known uh, among the students and pupils, but also among the parents, because we are facing, since the schools are chasing their, their, their learning materials, we sometimes face the fact that how can the pupils, first, second graders, have marked these and these that need to be done and not the other page or, or something like that. And maybe the parents make them be a bit confused that how come other pupils are doing extra work that and should their children do that the same. So collaboration with the parents is important, especially when we're talking about the setting the goals with the with the lower grades. And of course, in language teaching um, in, in Finland, we start the English language in the first grade that that changed two years ago. So again, now it's more important that the, the parents are sort of knowing how to support the children. And, and they are learning little by little of taking more uh, easy elements for, from the English, English language and then uh, also combining the subject to, with, the, with the English. So this is one way we are uh, helping the students building their individual pathways. And it doesn't, of course, mean that in K-12 sector they have in individual pathways like they do have in high school, but they have this kind of a mindset. Again, how can they affect to their own learning process and, and what are then those choices that they, they need to do or ha have a chance to do when they go to the eighth grade and then they can choose whether they study more 
uh, new languages or whether they take um, sports or home economics, ICT, uh, arts, woodwork, and so on. So one way of, of supporting our pupils to understand that these uh, subjects are important and what is the role for, for those in their, in their latest studies. And um, here, what is, I would like to highlight the um, Colby circle. Probably you are aware of this. So this is an, a one way of sort of showcase the experimental learning. And in a lower grade, experimental learning comes through play. Students or pupils will, will learn new things when they play together and then they shortly do the reflection and they realize, okay, this is how the play goes. So next time they know the rules. So it starts with the very um, easy things and, and then they kind of uh, understood the, uh, will understand the bigger picture. When we go to the upper grades, we are using the learning cycle to, to be really the main thing when, for example, doing the projects together with our students. So first of all, we, for example, have the, some kind of an event, the sales event at school. So the students are, are working together in a groups and then they are creating, having a new experiences. Um, after the event, it's uh, time to reflect. So they look back and, and observe that uh, how, how did they do it? What went well? And, and then they would uh, do some sort of um, manuals or, or at least the conclusions that uh, for the next time, what needs to be done, what, what should be done better. And, and while they have um, done the conclusions, then start planning for, for the future. So the idea of these type of experimental learning cycles um, is just that they would understand that the learning has already happened because they were hands on doing uh, whatever project or a teamwork that they had in a classroom. So it can be like a tiny project that is happening in a classroom, or it can be some bigger, bigger project that is happening with the working life. And the more we can uh, collaborate inside the school with the different subjects, of course, that would be more beneficial for, for the students to understand that this type of um, um, learning happens while they are actually having fun and, and, and working together. So um, another thing which I already mentioned shortly, uh, which is one of the, the highlights of when we talk about the, the Finnish education is the teacher collaboration. So we started with the student-centered, meaning that we see our classroom uh, with full of different kinds of learners and we are trying to create the atmosphere, learning environment to be positive and we are taking our roles to not just to be the teacher pouring the information, but more or less like collaborating with our students. The second element as important is the collaboration with our colleagues. And in Finland, um, one of the most important place in school is the teacher's lounge. So this is the place where the teachers are hanging, um, hanging out um, during the breaks. Even the breaks are short, but it's important to, to share your knowledge. And more and more in Finland, we are having combined classrooms, meaning that we have, for example, um, two fifth grader classes put together and they have two uh, teachers just to support, again, the different learners in that classroom. So when talking about team teaching, uh, team teaching and, and teacher collaboration, there are many uh, options to do that. Some uh, lighter versions just to um, maybe use some time and, and, and create the lesson plans together, at least share the knowledge and, and discuss how, how would you uh, teach this type of content inside the same subject. And then there are more uh, deeper type of collaboration, like a co-teaching when there are actually two teachers in a classroom at the same time. So here are some options that are, are used most of our schools, not of course all the time, but at least that um, 
we can easily see that um, there are different ways to, to collaborate. If we start from, from here, um, there is a one teacher who is teaching and the other one is, is mainly observing. Well, this would mean that the, uh, the one who is observing is, is uh, more likely to be uh, either a new teacher who is just going to see that how is the dynamics in a classroom, or it, it would be the student training to be a teacher. Otherwise, there is usually no role for the observers in a Finnish classroom. And in Finland, we don't have any inspections so that nobody is coming to your classroom and, and observe you in a way that they would evaluate how you are teaching. So that is one thing that in Finland, each teachers have total autonomy to decide how they are running their lessons and how they are doing their lesson plans. They have an autonomy to decide what methods and tools they are using. So these type of in, in inspections are not, not happening. So in that sense, uh, there are not that many observations. But of course, also the types like uh, now inside this project, so when we have the Hungary week and then there will be a week in Finland, then you guys would be the ones to observe how it's how the teacher is doing the teaching and what is happening in a classroom. So mainly it's about the visitors, teachers from other schools, and mainly, mainly uh, teachers outside of Finland that are coming to our classrooms to observe. Uh, the other option, uh, one teaches and, and one support. Now this is the more common, and, and the one who is uh, teaching is the main uh, classroom teacher or the subject teacher, but then the one to support could be the learning assistant, so we're using lots of learning assistant in the lower grades, and especially with the subjects uh, of um, Finnish language, mathematics, and, and English language. So if this would be your classroom, it would mean that you would be the main teacher, and then the um, learning assistant would be the one who is supporting those who might have a bit challenges of, of the learning, or in a classroom, if, if it's like the, the big classroom, so you need someone there to, to also go through each, each pupils to, to get them started to do their work or somehow help, help there to, to have an order in a classroom or so. Also an option could be that um, the one who would support is the special teacher. So special education teacher usually comes to the classroom and, and support uh, those uh, students who are so somehow struggling with their learning. It's possible that they, those students are going to some other room with the uh, special education teacher, but more and more the special education actually comes to the classroom because then she or he can help more than just one or two during that learning session. Well, then the third one, the parallel teaching is that um, we are um, sort of teaching different people um, at the same time. And, and this is very much of, of what we have here now in Finland when we are combining uh, the classrooms. That um, we have, for example, um, the fifth graders, two, two classrooms are together and they are two teachers. They are teaching at the same time uh, probably even the same subject, but they might have a different um, angle to, to what, what they do. Uh, another one could, could explain um, about drawing techniques and another one, for example, uh, how to use the colors. Of course, with this parallel teaching, the, the main challenge is the, the facilities, that how can we provide the classroom in a way that we can have actually two groups there and two teachers talking at the same time. Maybe it's somehow um, separated or, or, or at least somehow we can sort of gather the students in different uh, parts of, of, the, of the room or something. Um, the, the fourth option here um, is an alternative teaching. And, and this would mean that uh, there are two teachers who are supporting with one another. And, and this is, highly happening when we are doing uh, some project work. So it would mean that the other teacher is more or less like uh, telling the overall picture what what uh, what is happening and what, what should you do 
and, and how to approach the project. And then the other teacher is taking uh, smaller groups and, and guiding and supporting them uh, individually. And, and this is also very strongly used in, in, in a classrooms when the classrooms are combined and, and when the schools or, or the classrooms are doing the projects. And as we can see here, the, also the responsibility of, of the classroom and the lesson plans and all are equally shared the more we go to, the, to this side of the structure. And then in the end is a team teaching <clears throat> alongside with one another is that we have one subject, we have two teachers, uh, full classroom, and then these two teachers have um, prepared the, the classroom in a way that they are kind of um, complementing with, with one another, which is also highly used and especially in adult education, we usually have this type of approaches in our classroom. So and now again, uh, a little exercise, uh, the ones who are online to, to use the chat that uh, which of these models have you used and, and the ones in, in collaborative short discussion that if you are familiar with any of these. And then again, uh, the feedback that, that we are getting uh, alongside these sessions that we have together with you is also to prepare that if, if the, everything is that's um, mentioned here is something that you are not familiar, then we can maybe highlight this in our following trainings, or we, can might, uh, we might have a sessions related to the core teaching that we have the trainings. But yes, let's try to chat, which are the core teaching models that you have used.
Okay, I can see that there's very good discussion going on in, in Colabora and I'm so waiting that we are able to um, actually meet with one another in Hungary because these are now the topics that are really like a hot potato in a way that would be nice to to talk more. Edith, would, would, would you wish to share something you uh, mentioned there, just to all of us who are here online? Uh, yes, actually, the conclusion is that uh, in generally in the Hungarian school system, it's not that possible to have two teachers uh, at the same time in one class because they are teaching parallel. But uh, for example, there is one uh, school in Bekis Chaba where they use this system in the primary school and they experience, uh, CLV has experienced it uh, in many ways. And of course it depends on of the other colleague, whether he or she is open or not to let the other one in and then uh, to work together, but uh, she has very good experiences. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, most of the teachers uh, from here ha has uh, experience, but not that much like you do in Finland, <laughs> but they want more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much, Edith. Um, quickly uh, scan through the um, chat that we have. So uh, here, quite many number ones, some number twos there, and, and mentioned that um, unfortunately, um, mainly the number one has been observation related to in inspections so and then again of course that's um it's not not the thing that we are uh, we would wish to highlight it's more or less like really collaboration between the teachers to be able to support with one another and and to 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 learn with one another and and usually um of course we all know that when we have two teachers we have two styles and two uh, personalities that um we can complement with one another uh we have more hands and eyes in a classroom which might help especially with the lower grades and and from the pedagogical point of view we have more opportunities for the small group work uh, teaching uh, one to one teaching and other this kind of uh, innovative experimental elements that we might be lacking when when always being alone with the with the students and now again of course depending on the school some schools have um, only maybe um, 15 to 20 pupils in a classroom some schools here in Finland have uh, 35 for, with um, one teacher so again if you are in a classroom with the uh, 15 pupils, it's much easier to do some new experimental things than when we are in a classroom with uh, 26 or so. Um, then the, the, the sharing, uh, as, as mentioned there with the, with the earlier picture that you are sharing responsibility. Of course, there is a, a benefits when, when you, you, you share your thoughts, beliefs, but also the responsibility of, of the whole um, functioning that you do meaning that the planning, the lesson plans, materials, resources. So you're able to, to gain more. And of course, the easiest way, if it's not happening in a classroom, if the collaboration cannot happen with the pupils and with the students, it can still happen sort of uh, in a back room, meaning that you can um, have this type of planning together with your colleagues, even though you implement it separately, but at least the feeling that you are able to share the materials, resources, and, and having the discussion that how this could be done, even though maybe in in um, in the classroom you are not able to be together with the same pupils. And as we see the positive sides of having a uh, two pair of of, of um, hands and and more more eyes, it's also of course to to find the partner because as we know the chemistry is is even though we might think our oh, she or he is a lovely colleague. Maybe the way to approach, uh, in a pedagogical point of view, is, is not the same. So then there might be some challenges uh, collaborating this way, especially uh, in in a classroom. But mainly, when we've been asking this in, in a Finnish school, is the lack of of time to do the planning. So it, it's easier just to to do the way you have done because there's not really time to do the planning. That type of uh, um, approach should be then also considered in a res resourcing the time wise for the uh, for the teachers.
So when we start by thinking, even though um, the chemistry may not, not always click in, in the first meeting, if we think about that the, these are our students, that is the first step towards the real collaboration. Because at least I have to, um, I have a confession to make that I always think about my students, my classroom. So I'm very like, in a way, not, not, not wanting anybody to, to come and interfere to my learning environment. So with this approach, we need to be able to see that these are our students, that we are here, both of us together because of their benefit. Um, then, of course, the, the, uh, the more we can prepare all, all the planning that we do together, uh, the result is, is, of course, much better. And then we need to be able to communicate openly because definitely there are lots of issues coming alongside the way and we need to be able to have a discussion about that. Um, and again, different kind of uh, methods and tools. If we are using them and, and not just not be afraid to, to explore, I'm sure we will find the way, how can we do this to, together, even though the start may not be exactly what we have planned or how, how do we see it, but we kind of learn to use the strength from, from both of the teachers or the strength of the, te the, the group of the teachers and then use that uh, when, when teaching our students. So to summarize, sharing is caring. And I think this is very much now also the, the network that we are building now here, the whole project is, is about sharing. First of all, sharing our ideas, ideas and thoughts about English language teaching, uh, pedagogical that point of view, the pedagogies that we are using, tools and methods inside the Hungary, globally, in Finland, outside the Finland, in my own classroom, in your classroom, so that we are also open uh, here today in, in our networking session, but also in our schools together with our colleagues so that we are able to provides now these ideas that we, we came today and what we are going to gain in, in, in the future meetings that we have. So with these four words, sharing is caring, I want to thank you all for, for listening my part. Um, it's been a pri privilege and pleasure to, to be here. And um, I think it's time for, for coffee at this point. Any words from Edith or Ors, please? Yes, I had to unmute myself. Thank you, Sana. It was really great. And yes, we just reached the time to have a coffee break. And then uh, within 15 minutes, after 15 minutes, we are going to meet here again. So I would like to ask all those who are uh, online uh, also to have a coffee and then please come back and join us and then we continue uh, with the uh, second session part. And Orshi, would it be possible that until we are away, you put on the slide with the QR code, just to have that on? The QR code for the application task? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. sure. Okay. And I would like to also mention that there was an important comment in the about the email address that we received this feedback that the info at Magic of Teaching um, is not working. So until we fix this, uh, please feel free to email us on altredu.nonprofit at gmail.com or info at finminta.com. And yes, this is this was important to mention for everyone. So yeah. Okay. Okay. See you then. Thank you.